Hey all, Brent here with my review of Gundam 00, Kido Senshi Gundam 00. Fortunately, we don't have a Seed Destiny Final Plus at the end. Um, season 2, Season 2, so no spoilers here, except I'm going to mention the names of some of the characters, which means they didn't die at the end of Season 1, and obviously that means that some characters show up, and you just, that's just, I have to talk about them, because they're there. But I, I'm, and I will reference a few major world events over the course of it, but I won't tell you the outcomes of them, and I won't say who dies. So this should be a pretty spoiler-free review. Now, I am a big Gundam fan, so I'm prejudiced, and I did really like this show. It does move very quickly. It reminds me a lot of Gundam Seed, actually. Um, there's not a battle every episode as there are in like a lot of Tomino shows. But when there's not a battle, there's quite a lot of character buildup. Um, I liked it. I think it, it worked very well, and those build up character buildup episodes are intense, and they do communicate quite a bit usually. So I think that that went quite. Uh, quite well. Unfortunately, those character build-up episodes uh, have a lot of dialogue, and the dialogue in the show is fairly dry. Not bad, and it does fit the characters. You know, each character has their own way of speaking and such. Uh, so I think that's that's that was very good, but very little memorable dialogue, characters don't have catchphrases, and just in general, the dialogue is kind of forgettable. Again, that, that's just, that happens a lot in anime. This do, the show does have a fair amount of sort of 70s vibe to it. Uh, Ribbons in particular has this sort of fab 70s bachelor pad and wears these fab flared pants and, and pantsuits. And uh, Mr. Bushido is this very 70s character whom I love. But there is that sort of referencing and pulling in of, of, of bits and elements of classic 70s mecha anime. Um, I think it's fine. I think it, it worked and fit in quite well. But just FYI, there are, there are a few things that kind of jump out at me you know, that way. I want to talk a bit about the, the characters. The pilots are, the Gundam Meisters, are more serious now. I, it's like they found their centers. They're, strangely enough, they're more committed now than they were in Season 1. And in Season 1, they seemed very strongly uh, committed to what they were doing. But... It's like it was an immature you know, commitment to, I'm going to do this no matter what. Now it feels like there's a, a deeper level of, of seriousness and thoughtfulness to how they go about their work. And it's like they're counting the cost a little bit more now. And they realize that the world is a little more complicated than they thought it was. So I, I, I like that you know, uh, uh, quite a lot. And it's, it's rather unusual for, for Mecha anime series to have characters who are not either... You know, totally coming down on the side of we're gonna do this, or eek, war is horrible. I don't want to do anything. So that was that's good. Um, a bit about some of the, the characters themselves. Setsuna is much more mature, much more focused. Um, as sort of the protagonist, he he I think uh, epitomizes that seriousness and commitment of 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 the uh, the Meisters, and he contrasts interestingly with Marina Ismail's plot. And I think that's one of the little missteps of the show. They did a lot of cutting back to Marina and what she's doing without that moving much at all. It just, she's still there, that's still happening, and we're sort of sitting there. Uh, and that, ha that goes on for episode after episode after episode. And I, to me, it just went on a bit too long. It didn't interfere significantly with my enjoyment of the show, but I think they could have cut back to that a little bit less. Um... But by the end, I was fine with it, and I really like what they did with her character as a result of what was going on there. Then you get Lyle and his relationship, and I love what they did with Lyle in terms of making him different from his brother, but similar uh, in, in ways that you're going to see in Brothers. That relationship that he has, to me, I bought it because it was there, but... To me, there wasn't enough establishing of why those two characters were together. It hurt when you know that um, fell apart. But I mean, they were just it's like they were together all of a sudden, and there was some establishment. But again, it didn't didn't quite work for me. Um, compared to Alleluia and Soma, for example, which really worked, really really worked. How those two characters sort of fit 
and the amount of time we spent with them and what they were doing with their, their relationship, to me that was just you know, probably the best character work of the show, except for some of the stuff with the principals. Um, but just, you know, those two characters I totally bought. Um, and Tieria was interesting. I mean, Tieria doesn't really have much to do. He has a lot of angst to work through. But, I mean, in season one, the beginning of season one, I didn't really like Tieria at all. I thought he was Wu Fei, just this big jerk. And they really built him up into this very nice hero character. I was very impressed by the fact that at the end, I was totally rooting for Tieria all the way. So, you know, good job there. And then really, the, the fifth Gundam Meister is Saji. Um, I hope that's not a spoiler. It's not really. I mean, he's not really a Gundam Meister. But, I mean, he, he definitely becomes more of a central a primary character. And the stuff with Saji and Louise, I mean, they always, the creators always said that Saji and Louise were kind of the emotional core of the, of the series. And I think they did that. I mean, where that relationship goes, to me, totally illustrates what I think they were trying to say with what war does to relationships. And I think that it just works really well. Um, the other major sort of relational thing is this sort of rectangle between Sergei and Andre and Louise and Soma, and just how all those fit together. I think that's, I mean, if Saji and Louise don't explain that whole war slash relationship thing, that relation group does perfectly. I mean, there's all sorts of pain and all sorts of frustration and all sorts of just folks trying to get along with that 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 works really well in, in that just is perfectly illustrative of what they're trying to do. Um, other characters felt very normalized and I was surprised that they didn't do more with Felt. I, I felt that Felt was some was going somewhere that didn't and that was fine. And I, I was impressed that they they felt willing to not do huge amounts with her in season two. They did do huge amounts with Sumeragi, and Sumeragi was awesome. I love her whole plot line. Um, also, Mr. Bushido. Mr. Bushido was awesome. Again, very 70s mecha giant robot, you know, character, which is very, very awesome, as was Patrick. Um, he was a character that I thought in, in season one would die within four episodes, but he just keeps coming back, and he was, he was really great. Um, Plot-wise, I think there were a few missteps near the end where, uh, well, not so much plot-wise, but like some characters didn't quite react the way I expected them to react. There were some situations where, uh, there was one with Louise where I thought she would react to this one piece of news with something more akin to anger, and instead it's sort of mute shock. And I thought, no, she would get physically worked up over this with this person. You know, again minor misstep kind of stuff. That, that's fine. Um, in terms of plot, I mean, we get three good, big, epic uh, fights. Some, you know, we even get a trench run, basically. And so there's a really good multi-episode building up to this gotta do this to save the world kind of big fights. And that's something that you really want in a mecha series. I mean, mecha shows are partly about mecha. And mecha are you know, big war machines. So you know, we we want some opportunities to, to see those war machines be big war machines, and we do. So, you know, thumbs up there. And people die. I won't tell you who, but some people die, and they're willing to do that. And they're willing to do that to characters that we care about, which I think is, you know, again, thumbs up to them. And then you come to the ending, which, if you didn't know this, it's basically pitting Setsuna up against Amaro. I mean, uh, and I don't think it's a spoiler to say that that that, uh, that Ribbons is one of the villains, um, and so you know Setsuna goes you know is antagonistic with Ribbons at some point. Ribbons is voiced by Amaro's voice actor, so it's the two of them fighting. I think that contrast is very interesting, and then it has that wonderful epilogue, and I think it's one of the best epilogues I've ever seen in an anime. It shows us what happens afterwards, and that was. So good to see. I think we really needed that with a show like Gundam Double O. It doesn't explain everything. I don't think it needs to. Um, I'm hoping it, that they'll explain Aelia Schoenberg's plan in, in the movie. But I think it ends very well. And I think the show overall, again, a few missteps, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a very good show, a very good Gundam show. Uh, mature, serious, and man, thumbs up. Good job.